Well, the story follows sisters Ruth, Esther, and Chloe, who have been singing and dancing in harmony since they could speak under the direction of their mother. And now, as they become women, they are looking to make their own path. Joining us now is the author of On the Rooftop, Margaret Wilkerson Sexton. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I have to tell you, so I was given the book on Friday. Uh -huh. I love the cover art, by the way. Isn't it gorgeous? Cute. I had nothing to do yeah. with the cover, so I feel like I can compliment the cover. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> and I thought, right, let me let me read this a little bit. I, yeah. I left work, and I, I always check the my phone to see, like, how bad the traffic is. Uh -huh. And I was like, okay, it's really bad. It's Friday. So uh -huh. I pulled the car over, and I was like, I'm going to read for a little bit. Let me read this book. Let me just tell you, I started reading your book. I got so engrossed that the light was gone. Oh, that makes me so The sun had happy. gone down, and uh -huh. I was like, I gotta drive home. Oh my gosh, this makes me so happy. Yeah, it just really drew me in quickly. Thank um, you. And I felt like, you know, I immediately got the sense of these different characters right away. Right, I'm so glad to hear that. I mean, that was certainly my goal. When I first wrote the book, the early drafts, The if you can believe this, Vivian had the most landscape of the book. She had really? like 80, 90 percent and we didn't hear much from the girls. Okay. But my editor advised me to have them come in more with more of their POV and that's been, I think that really added a level of depth and texture to the book that it wasn't does, there before sure. with just that one character. So tell us a little bit about the story. Okay, so um, the story is about Vivian who moves from Louisiana to get this relative reprieve from racism and she has all these hopes and dreams to move to the Bay Area and she gets there and as soon as she lands, she marries and she has these three daughters and then her husband dies. And so all this hope that she had pinned on this new, this new lifestyle for herself and for her family is just sort of flailing with nowhere to go. And she pours it into her daughters and her dreams for them to be singing sensations. And by the time we meet the girls, it's the 50s and, you know, um, the, the Fillmore District of San Francisco where this takes place has been dubbed the Harlem of the West. And so it's infused with this huge jazz musical scene and the girls are at the helm of this and she has these exciting ambitions for them to be taken on by this manager and then one by one, as in Fiddler on the Roof, right, wh saying, which is based right. on one by one, they each disappoint her in favor of their own dreams for their own lives. So I, I found it kind of fascinating because it was set in a time in San Francisco when gentrification was happening in some of the neighborhoods here. And they were talking about kind of the Fillmore district area. Yeah. And what And to me, it kind of became almost, I, I love reading fiction. But I especially love it when I can read fiction that's set in a real place and time that I can walk away feeling like I almost took a walk down the street during that time and got right? kind of a historical context. It felt like a character in the book to me. I love that. And, you know, I didn't know anything about that. I, I knew about that part of time in other areas, but not about the Fillmore District. I didn't know about the Urban Renewal Program, which came along in the 50s and 60s yeah. and which ended up displacing thousands of black people from their homes. Right. And, of course, it's never, you know, they've never been recovered. They've never been able to go back. San Francisco is still still, you know, facing gentrification to this day. Right. So it's a very poignant um, and yet timely aspect of history that I didn't know about. So that I, I love that other people are learning about through this book. Yeah, and I wanted to ask you, like, what was your inspiration for this story? Because it is such a mix of kind of family dynamics and then you've got this showbiz angle. Yeah, and what, yeah. Were you reading something or saw something that made you go, ooh, you know, it would be a cool idea? Well, you know, it was actually my mom. We, when I was growing up in New Orleans, we watched Fiddler on the Roof on VHS in my home, like, every single weekend. We liked knew all the songs, we recited all the lines, and then in 2007, she called me and she said, I think you should write an adaptation of Fiddler on the Roof. And from a black <laughs> woman's perspective, and we would set it in New Orleans, I'm from New Orleans, she right. and I both are, and the parallel displacement to the Fiddler on the Roof displacement would have been, in her mind, Hurricane Katrina. Ah. Yeah, and the climactic image at the end would have been the, the woman and her daughters holding up signs saying, help me. Yeah. Um, I had written a book already, a Kind of Freedom, which is my first book that targeted Hurricane Katrina, and I just did didn't want to write about that again. So I started researching other displacements that had happened in the U.S. Okay. and I came across the Urban Renewal Program. Yeah, because I mean, it really changed the makeup of these neighborhoods Absolutely. and the character of them and the cultures that were very entrenched in them, That's right? exactly right. So uh, let me talk a little bit about this whole Reese Witherspoon book club. Okay. I mean, what is it like when you get the call and you're like, hey, uh, Reese Witherspoon likes your book. She's a major movie star who tends to make movies out of books. Uh -huh. And you just made her pick. I think it was probably the top five happiest moment of my life, I'm going to say. Um, I was, it was in my house. I didn't expect it that day. My editor texted me and said, are you free to talk in the next 10 minutes? So I knew there was something yeah, major. She said, up. yeah, and she said, we have positive news to share. So 
I knew it was something really happy. I was on the phone with my mom, and I was like, oh, let me call you back. I got off the phone with her. My editor called. They didn't, like, beat around the bush. They were just like, Reese Witherspoon has selected you for the September pick for her book club. And I just started screaming. Amazing. I truly was just screaming. My husband was downstairs. He works from home since the pandemic. He heard me screaming. He says he almost, like, got up to see because it, it sounded <laughs> like it could have even been negative. It was so much screaming. He just wasn't sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then he finally got upstairs, and it was, it was positive. I mean, it must yeah. be thrilling and just thrilling. You can maybe find a wider audience as well when Absolutely. someone does Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Just for the message of this book to be able to be shared beyond my own capacity to reach people has been such a gift. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about now, for those who are in the Bay who might want to meet you and, and talk about your book some more, you have an event coming up this weekend. That's right. We have an event. It's, um, it's sponsored by the National Kidney Foundation. It's on Saturday at the Palace Hotel in San Francisco at noon. And it's not just me who's going to be there. We have stars like Jennifer Egan and Michael Connolly and cool. other authors. It's a great way for a literary enthusiast to come and support the efforts of the National Kidney Foundation. Excellent. Well, I got to tell you, I'm so much enjoying your book. So, oh, thank yeah, you. I appreciate it's that. It's really fun to get to meet you and just kind of hear more about the background of it. And it's I wish so you nice all you. the best with it. I'm, I'm ready you. for Reese Witherspoon to make the movie happen. So. I am too, Kyla. If you're listening, Reese, <laughs> get on it. Um, okay, so to grab a copy of Margaret's book or more on the upcoming event she'll be involved in, we're going to have a link on our website at liveinthebay.tv. But for now, we're going to send it over to Jess for a look at what is coming up. Jess.